The picture is quite frightening, it is true. I think that a solution to this huge problem of incentives to the economies may actually come from outside, especially in Europe or in other Western, Western countries, but not only. I think uh, there should be a demand for a different sort of economics. It is true that the economists have given quite wrong policy recipes in the last few years. And I think that, for example, progressive movements, trade unions, even political parties may come to demand different uh, approaches, different methods and more pluralism within the economics profession. To achieve this goal would require changing the rules by which economists are recruited, promoted and, and the research is financed. I'm Carlo Di Politi and I'm at Sapienza University of Rome. The recruitment and promotion of academics has traditionally been based on peer review. That will be the evaluation of academics by other academics. Uh, this has historically opened the door to corruption or even discrimination. And for this reason, a number of countries are moving to another system based on citation counts. That is, they count how many times a researcher, a journal, or even a single paper or piece of research has been cited by the scientific literature. And it is often assumed that these aggregates, these numbers, would somehow measure the quality of a researcher, of a paper, or even of departments and all countries. Citation counts are supposed to be objective measures of scientific quality, but this is highly problematic. Indeed, the solution could be even worse than the problem itself because it risks creating more discrimination than the peer review system. In fact, we know that, for example, citations are not normally distributed as most other variables would do. Very few papers, very few researchers have enormous amounts of citations and then all the others have very little. For this reason, for example, just taking simple averages has very little sense. But most importantly, citations are very biased. For example, we know that papers will be more highly cited depending on how many authors they have, the age, the sex of the authors, and even just the title length. Shorter titles will make for more citations. What is more worrying in economics, however, is that citations are very much biased also against uh, certain topics, certain fields of research. For example, uh, researchers working on peripheral countries will necessarily be less highly cited than researchers working on the US economy. Or, for example, they are biased against women. Women researchers on average receive less citations than men. This applies to a number uh, of dimensions, including uh, research methods. So, for example, uh, researchers that do not fully or necessarily agree with the mainstream of the profession are less highly cited. And this is a huge risk for the development of economics in the future. For example, when studying citations, I have taken the example of one country, Italy, and I've looked at how many citations each economy in the country uh, made to every other economy in the country. What did emerge from my analysis is that, for example, uh, working on the same topics make it three times more likely than economists will cite someone else. But for example, being affiliated to the same institution, which in principle has nothing to do with scientific quality, makes it twice as likely that two economists uh, will cite each other. And also some measures of political and ideological proximity make it at least 5% more likely than an economist will cite someone else. These are all measures of possible biases of citations that as a consequence cannot be taken to be objective measures of scientific quality. In particular, from my analysis, it also emerges that these uh, network connections between single economists are different, for example, for younger authors or for women economists. And this implies that the sort of incentives that young economists or women economists receive, because they could be subject to discrimination, make them, or in a sense, even force them to focus on certain topics, on joining certain communities of researchers by, wing, by which uh, they could be cited. And this is, in this sense, a risk for the economic profession because it is actively suppressing the freedom of research. Uh, it is constructing certain very strong incentives on the side of those who are possibly weaker uh, because they are at, at uh, younger stages of their careers. The problem of using citation measures that are too simplistic and biased, and which may affect the development of the discipline, is not just limited to economics. We have seen in recent years uh, increasing number of 
academic journals, societies, associations, and even uh, academies of science criticizing the system, for example, uh, the German, the Italian, the French, uh, and the English one uh, criticized the mechanic and automatic use of citation measures for, for aims of research evaluation. I think it's important to, first of all, uh, remind to everybody that in order to really assess the scientific quality of a piece of research, it should be read. That is the only way by which we could really uh, have an opinion about the scientific content of a piece of research. Then it is true that sometimes for some aims of more general, more massive evaluation, if they really were needed, better methods could be developed. For example, we should absolutely not uh, continue with the illusion that a single and simplistic uh, measure of indicator can summarize everything. So we should always consider a plurality of indicators. They should be standardized, for example, by topic or research method. And that is the most important thing, I think. Preserving pluralism within the discipline should be a primary and explicit aim of research evaluation. There has been growing serious criticism of the experts and of economics, economists in particular. This is not totally unjustified if we think of glaring errors that have been made within the profession, for example, with the idea of expansionary austerity or with the idea that there is a fixed threshold about which a public debt will be a nightmare for the economy and so on. Uh, still, I think there are still grounds for which uh, a young students will want to study economics because it is a crucial uh, aspect of our reality. It really affects the well-being of most people and we really need the sort of students that, that will have a more critical stance. So it is in particular those who are more skeptical in this moment who should more clearly decide to study economics and join the fight. The development of economics is strongly affected, among other things, by the possibility to finance innovative research projects, uh, funding um, especially uh, younger uh, scholars and those with the most innovative, radical and even heterodox ideas. From this point of view, research institutions or foundations such as INET are very important because especially certain parts of society have been a very strong impact on the recent development development of economics, leading it in a clearly neoliberal direction. And we really need some uh, counterweighting uh, sources of financing that could increase pluralism within the discipline.